Okay, um, we're going to get started tonight. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank the Jackson County Public Library for giving us this space and opportunity to, to uh, talk about some things. Uh, I'm Jay Coward, um, and uh, we are going to be talking about the improvements to the 107 uh, corridor tonight, and I hope everybody's had a chance to take a look at some of the maps that are here. Uh, we have these color maps out front <clears throat> that sort of give a, a, a colored picture of what things look like, and we have the black and white maps here which show a great more detail what's actually happening. Um, I want to make a few announcements right off the bat. Uh, the, uh, we're being um, filmed tonight by Avram Friedman who is uh, with the Canary Coalition. Avram at one time was also uh, a member of the Smart Roads Alliance uh, years ago. Uh, he wants you to know that uh, you need to turn off your cell phones because that interferes with his uh, video. And he's live streaming, so you can get this, uh, and it will be also available later on on Facebook. So he's doing this for free, but he said he would be glad to have a small donation or a large donation for that matter. Uh, and so we're going to help him out with that later on. Uh, If you want to get maps of this project later on, we can email you maps of particular ones that might, uh, uh, you might be interested in because it affects your property or business. Uh, and let's see. And if you haven't signed in, please do sign in because we want to try and keep track of everybody who showed up for this meeting so we can uh, make sure that everyone gets a shot at saying what they think about the project. Uh, I want to introduce a few people uh, who are here in somewhat semi-professional or other capacities. Julie Mayfield from Asheville. Uh, her parents are from Sylvan. She's part Sylvan girl. She's also uh, the head of Mountain True, and uh, she'll be speaking to you about Mountain True later on. She's a city councilman in Asheville, and she's been working on projects like this for a long time. She's with uh, Chris Joel, who is uh, also with Mountain Fruit. He comes from a company called uh, Asheville Design, and he does design work, and, uh, and he's also uh, thrown in to help us. Uh, Sarah Thompson is here. She's a member uh, at one time of the, uh, it was called the Corridor Study Committee member, and she was there as her official uh, participant from Southwestern Commission, which she is now the director of. So thank you for coming. And <clears throat> uh, I just want to mention the name of Walter Kulash, who is uh, an engineer and a designer uh, who worked with us on the Smart Roads uh, project before uh, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, so Smart Roads Alliance is a, a real live corporation. Uh, it is uh, still incorporated in the state of North Carolina. If you want to check on Smart Roads Alliance, all you got to do is go on the Secretary of State's uh, website, and it's still in existence. And our purpose, one of our purposes tonight, is to try to organize it so that it's functional again uh, and useful to the community. Uh, Lydia Aidlett is also someone who is, could not be here tonight, but she's going to be involved uh, with the program. Also, Gary Miller has agreed to be our treasurer because we've got to raise some money in order to make this thing happen. More about that later. But Lydia did send word that she wanted us to just m mention that um, Smart Road started with the release of the DOT's feasibility study for a bypass in 2002. And the upshot of the feasibility study for the bypass is that the most significant proposal was to create a road from 107 uh, to 2374 at Blanton Branch and also from 107 to Dillsboro. But it was thought it would not make any actual significant 
uh, impact on the traffic, and uh, <coughs> she just wanted to say that Smart Roads played a huge role in studying and making proposed changes to that plan. And as you know, that was to fight the Southern Loop. Uh, and the Southern Loop doesn't <coughs> exist. Uh, it may someday in the future, but uh, because Smart Roads got involved in it, it doesn't exist now. And so the, the point of putting Smart Roads Alliance back together is to be able to speak about this particular project. And um, Julie's going to speak about that in some more detail in just a second. Well, in a few minutes, not just a second. Uh, I want to also thank uh, the Silver Herald uh, and making this suddenly uh, something that we need to sit up and pay attention to. They produced a, an article and there was some controversy about whether or not it was, it was accurate later on. And, and I believe after studying these maps for several weeks now that it is a very accurate article. And, and I think that uh, a couple of things that uh, they report on uh, is worth repeating tonight. Um, in quoting uh, Division Engineer Brian Birch, who oversees Division 14, it said, We are committed to continuing to work with our stakeholders in developing this project. We are still at a position that the plans could be modified. So that's our Division Engineer saying, Okay, if you want to have some input, we're still open to that input. So that's why we're meeting tonight. We're trying to make sure that we can organize a group of citizens who can effectively communicate with the DOT and, and voice their concerns in an effective way, just like we did 10 years ago when we stopped the Southern Loop. Uh, there's also the project engineer, Jonathan Woodard, said there is a chance that the number of relocations can be reduced. So they're, all, they're saying that they want to have input and they're saying that some of the relocations uh, that they're proposing with this plan right now can be changed and reduced. So that's an important thing for us to remember going into this thing. And uh, one, one last thing that the DOT was quoted and saying that I want to make sure you understand is that the NCDOT's goals are twofold, to ease gridlock and to make the road safer for motors. I don't think anybody in this room would object <clears throat> to that, having safer roads and having less gridlock. Although, if you want to see gridlock, go to Atlanta, <laughs> go to Raleigh, go to Charlotte. We have like two minutes of gridlock on 107 and then it's over with in my opinion. Um, so, um, and one last thing that I want to, to remind you of, that sometimes these plans don't turn out as, as they're intended. Um, their request cost estimate for the cost of this particular project that's right here is $47 million. Uh, the Silver Herald published and I think it is probably close enough to being accurate to repeat that the combined property value on this corridor is $23 million. So they're going to spend twice as much as the value of the property is on this project. And uh, if they stick to the project that we're looking at here, there's going to be at least 22, build, 22 businesses that are going to be completely eradicated. All right, and I want to to take this moment now to walk you through part of that because you need to see. First of all, has anybody in here, has any person had a DOT person come to you and say, "Let me explain what this road is about, uh, and and how it might affect your property"? If so, raise your hand. I've gone to them and uh, asked them how it might. Incomplete plans do not use for right-of-way acquisition. 
document not considered final unless all signatures are completed. So this is not the final plan. That's good news because this means we have input at this time and we can actually uh, have, have a say so about what's happening. But I want you to understand that right now their proposal, if we don't say anything at all, is going to go in the way it's on this piece of paper. So if we don't have input, then here's what's going to happen. I want to take you, this will take about 10 or 15 minutes. I want you to go to the very first uh, place where it starts is Innovations Brewery. The project starts there because there's, and Innovations Brewery is on the, the uh, north side of 107. I'm going to take you through the south side of 107 from this particular spot right here uh, through and to Coke Creek. So you'll get to see exactly what they're planning right now. And if you want to look at how it affects your particular property later on, the maps are up here. But I want to show you how you got to look at these and how you have to uh, read. All right, here's the first thing that we need to look at. If you'll blow up on this section right here, over oh, that's the uh, okay. So this this right here, this line, which says C O N C, and this line right here, which says C O N C, that's that's the bridge that presently crosses over the, the Scotts Creek right now. So it's that's one side of the bridge. This is the other side of the bridge. What they're going to do is they're going to move this bridge. They're going, to, uh, they're going to move it over, and this is going to be the new bridge right here. And it will be going from this abutment here to that abutment over there. So the bridge has got to move. And when they move it, it's also going to realign the road, if you'll uh, zoom out for a second. Because they're going to move that bridge, they have to realign the road starting way back here and going all the way up this way. Now, the first thing I want to show you is the first building that they're going to uh, hit. And that's the... Let me back up a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Here's the first building they're going to hit. This is where... Uh, the wholesale uh, lamp shop is and, and kitchen fixtures and so forth. Zoom in on that. Uh, <clears throat> and you, when you read these maps, you've got to really hunt for details because they are very, very exact. They're going to knock the front of this building right off. And the reason you can tell is because right there is the corner of that building. That little squiggly right there is, the, is the, the square part of that building right there. That's the sidewall, that's the front, and the road is going to knock the whole front of that thing right off. Now go on to the right. Uh, it will continue, since the bridge has moved and the road's being aligned, it will also knock, whoops, wrong button. It will also knock this building right here off. The front of that building will be gone. And there'll be a road there instead. Now there's a couple of things you've got to remember <clears throat> about these maps. You've got a right-of-way. That's what RW stands for. And you've also got an E. And all the maps I've looked at over the years, that means easement. So the right-of-way is what is going to be the travel portion of the road. But the easement has actually come back that far right there. And if you'll notice, the easement... It, comes even further back into the building than just this line right here. Remember, the, the building now is right along that line. So they're going to take out a big chunk of that building. About a quarter of the building is going to be removed. Next door, where Speedy's is, you can see the front part of Speedy's is in the road that they're going to build. So they're going to knock that off, and their easement is going to go back into the building. And uh, another thing you got to understand about these maps is this means right here, this, this dark line is shown on this particular colored map here as having some kind of structure. 
it, we don't know what kind of structure it will be, but the red line is uh, uh, proposed structure, island, curb, and or gutter, expressway gutter. So that's going to be some kind of physical structure that's going to be located uh, in the parking lot right here, which means there's a good possibility that there's going to be no way of getting into this parking lot unless you come up here and then drive under the canopy, go around this way, and come through the back to get to the front door, which is no longer going to exist. The door's going to be gone. Where you have the easement, or where the easement line is listed on that, is that the current easement line? No. Or is that where it's going to end up being with this? That is where it's going to end up being if this project is completed the way it's, it's shown. So keep on going to the right, Olga, if you don't mind. I should have introduced Olga Lampkin, who's helping me right here. She's the tech guru that I'm not. Okay. Um, you can see this building here, the, the gas station. Uh, the the right of way is going to go right up next to the canopy. This is the canopy right here. This is the building. So the road is going to go right up next to it. And it appears that there might be uh, some tank, underground tanks that are in within the easement. And whether or not that's going to be allowed or not is yet to be seen because usually they take those, those tanks up. Uh, so we keep on going out this way. So even if the gas station wanted to stay there, they'll lose their tanks. Yeah. The effect on, on this, the, on each property is, is not necessarily a total removal or taking of it. It's a, it's a matter of how much of an internal organ you can remove from your body before your body dies. And that's what some of these businesses are going to be, it's going to happen to them. They're going to be so hurt that they're not going to be able to survive. Here's a good example right here. This little fruit stand, which has been here for no telling how many years uh, is going to go. It's just, it's going to be gone. It's, it's history, I'm afraid. And this is, this particular section is owned by Miss Jean Inslee, who's sitting here on the second row right on the corner. And what I think sometimes we fail to realize is that there are real life people who are affected by this. Not, it's not just a map. It's people who live there, who own it, who've owned it for a long time that are being affected. So uh, that the rest of that particular roadway uh, is, is going to move over into that grassy area and, and take up about half of what's there right now. Because the road has to be moved over here because, again, they are going to be moving the bridge. As you can see, there is the bridge right now. There's the square where the bridge goes over the Scotts Creek. This is the new bridge right here. So they're going to move it over here. It's going to take up all the land right through here. And then it's going to make this turn right here, slam right into the next building, and clip it off. So this building right here, which is, I think, Haywood Furniture, that's going to be taken off right there as you go past where the chiropractic, it's going to take part of their parking. And a lot of times, all it does is take parking, and the parking may be the only thing that's affected. But sometimes, parking is absolutely critical. Sometimes there's unique things that make a property worth something. And, and look at Rite Aid. Their drive through lane right here has got to go. There's not enough room. This is a retaining wall right here. So they'll build a retaining wall about the middle of that driveway, and that drive-through is history. We keep on going over to this Geneva Lineberry track. And here, where one of the finest 107 roundabouts could be built, one that would, would reduce the traffic congestion by half if they would just simply figure out how to plot down a roundabout, they, what they do is instead they completely take this building right here out. This is <clears throat> the building that Orban Hannibal owns that he rents to uh, Gary Miller. It's gone. Not only is it gone, the lot next to it is so uh, 
affected that it's probably gone too. And then we move to uh, moving on up the road past the this mess right here. We go next to where the Kelsey drugstore is, and, and I want to introduce you to another term that you'll see on these maps, and that's CA. And what that means is controlled access. So this road that presently is being used to get up Roads Cove will be abandoned. Uh, it doesn't show it on this map, but it does show it on this map over here, and it will uh, it will be it will no longer be a road. It's gone. But most important is that this is a controlled access. That means that there's going to be no access into this piece of property right now. This is the old entrance right here, and this is parking lot right here. So controlled access means there's going to be a guardrail, there's going to be concrete blocks, there's going to be something that prevents you from getting there. So on this particular so property... So where is the access coming from? Well, probably, if this is also uh, a concrete barrier, uh, you're going to have to come all the way up here, come in this way, and go that way, and try to find some place to park. Because remember, the easement, if they're st they still control that easement. So <coughs> that business is going to lose half of its parking, and it's going to lose one of its main entrances. So move on to the next one. So, uh, and also, this lot right here, which is a vacant lot, about half of it, because here's the easement line, is going to be taken. Now, vacant lots have some value. They have value for people who want to park or who want to sell to other people who want to develop. So, just because it's vacant doesn't mean it doesn't have value. And I'm going to talk about value later on, but right now, just know that this particular lot, half of it, or more than half of it, is now gone. So we move past that. Uh, and here's an example that I think is worth mentioning. Uh, this particular property right here is now a tire store. It used to be a, a bread store right here. You go down this road right here to get to Rhodes Cove, and the the road is going to be right on the top of what is a bank now. Probably this is the best example I can think of of a property that could maybe not have a great deal of effect in terms of its use. Unless you consider this particular line right here, which is the easement line, which goes all the way down through there. If they take the property, uh, in accordance with this plan, that means that any time they wanted to, in the future, they could do anything they wanted to all the way down through here with that easement. Now go to the, the next one is the uh, Shell Station. Um, and if you'll notice on the Shell Station, this is where the car, car wash is right here. They're going to build a, uh, a retaining wall right here. If you note, it says begin retaining wall, end retaining wall. Here's the end of it. Here's the beginning of it. So this will no longer be a way to get in. And because the easement is right there, it may not be a way to get out either if you've got your car washed right there. And the entrance or the exit comes out there. Uh, and the easement goes over into this part underneath the canopy and down through here. So keep on going over here. Here's a, a, another really interesting, uh, to me it's interesting, it's kind of sad, but here's another piece of property. This is vacant, but this piece of property has a house on it. And the house has a front stoop right there, and that's where your front door comes in. Well, the control access is going right through the house on that little corner right there. Well, so maybe you just have to come in the back door, you say. However... And this is really important, and you don't um, you don't notice this unless you've had experienced it before. But on this side right here is a property, line. and because this property right here no longer has access to the 107, the only way it could get in was through access across this boundary line right here. 
Now, the neighbor does not have to give that person a right of way. He doesn't have to have a say, oh, I'll tell you what, you, you've been blocked off by this control access, we'll just let you go right through here. Doesn't have to do that, there's no legal requirement to do that, and if the DO takes it and there's no way to get into it and his neighbor doesn't want to give him any access, then that's a total taking. That house, whether it's still standing there or not, has been totally taken by the Department of Transportation because it has no longer, all of it, since you can't get to it, has uh, no longer any economic usefulness whatsoever. So that's what you call a total take. Whether it looks like one or not, it is. So, but to give you an idea of what a total take uh, can do, uh, this is Zaxby's right here. And coal, this is your building right here. This is a new U-turn. Uh, so if you're coming from Coke Creek and you need to go to, say, Sheds, you'll have to come from over there, down Coke Creek, and turn right here into this U-turn to get back out. Now, one of the things that we're hoping to do when we hire uh, Walter Kulosh is to get him to uh, opine about this one issue right here. This is going to be left as a, a vacant area right here. Although this is uh, right there, they're going to leave this as vacant, pretty much unaffected. Why in the world they couldn't simply move this whole thing down to this vacant area and, and avoid having to take that building? I don't know, but I'll bet you Walter Kulash can give us a good explanation and tell us how to do a better job than these engineers have done. And by the way, these engineers are not the kind of engineers that um, you're going to run into at the ball game or the grocery store or church. These engineers are from failure. They hire this out. These people have not one thing that they are beholden to in this community. They have no stake whatsoever. They come up here from the vehicle, they plop down plans like this, and they go back home. And that's what the DOT says is their plan. <clears throat> uh, keep on going. All right, so here uh, we have another building, which is the, it was called Pacifico, it's not called Pacifico now, but uh, yeah. Mesquite Grill. Okay, Mesquite Grill. Uh, it's hard to tell whether the front of Mesquite Grill is taken or whether it's not. But it's certainly, if it's not taken, it's bumping right up against it. Um, and if you keep on going over uh, the next business is, uh, this is Sheds, uh, this is the, this is Betty Painter's building here. Uh, and the easement to it goes right up to the edge. So keep on going up towards. Now, I, I told you I was going to, I'm almost done, but I'm just trying to give you an example of what they're really planning on doing and how it affects uh, things. Uh, zoom out just a little bit. Okay, this is the Coke Creek intersection now. The light is right here. You come down Coke Creek right here, and then if you need to cross over, you cross over there. So this intersection right here is going to be totally changed. <clears throat> this road will be eliminated right here. That will no longer be a way to get to this property. And um, the house that's located on this side, the south side, will have to go. That's going to be removed. That'll be a total taking. Uh, the bank building, or what used to be a bank building, which is across the street, uh, will be go. It'll go. It's a total trust building. Yeah, that's gone. And if you look at the easement again, the right of way and the easement both cut into the corner of the gas station. So part of this gas station, the back little corner right here, is going to go. Now, I didn't, I said I was just going to look at the south side for a limited second, so I'm going to stop right here. But this is just to give you uh, 
an indication of what you, you've got going down the whole the whole corridor. And I've counted, there's 27 businesses or properties, and I've graded them on a scale of A, B, C, D, and F. F being a total take, no question about it. Uh, and D being, it's so effective that it might as well be called a total taking. There are four F's, there are two D's that are so effective that I would call them total taking, and there are two C's which are so close that I think that they could be uh, moved to a D. For example, the Kelsave um, spot with the control access and the movement of the exit up the road causes it to be such a, a hard a uh, place to turn into it could very well be a place that people would bypass because they want to go somewhere else. That's what I would call a C moving to a D and a D perhaps going to an F. So we have uh, two Ds, five Cs, uh, that being uh, major damage but maybe not depending on how the, the owner is able to live with it. B, uh, there were nine Bs, major damage, but you can live with it. That usually means you've lost some parking, so you can still operate, but you've lost some parking. And then there's uh, I counted seven As, uh, not to indicate well done, good job, but just uh, like the, the building I was showing you, which is the tire store, now the bread store, is off down away from it. That's that's an A. That, the, the effect on that is probably not going to be all that great. But four of those properties are Fs. Four of those in just this one segment are Fs. And I've counted up the numbers on both sides of 107 going from one end to the other, and there are 22 Fs. So when the, when the, the paper says 55 business is gone, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gone. It means that they might be so affected that they're gone, but of the 55, 22 of them are just gone. They're not there anymore. They, they will have to remove the entire structure in order to make it work. So that's 22. So if you don't think this is not serious, think again. And, and the point is, we've still got some time to intervene and talk to the DOT so that we can affect change so that it's not 22. It's not even 11. It may be something less. You have a question? Yeah. Like the laundromat that build, that they, they showed even half of our parking lot. Does that mean we'll lose our parking lot? Or yes. Really? It does. It means that you no longer <coughs> own that parking lot. Uh, but you can still use yeah. Eastman's different from that. It, it is. A right-of-way, like I said, a right-of-way that's shown here, which has these structures around it, is the travel portion of what's going to be where the traffic's going to be. And there may be a structure that prevents you from getting past that, or there may not. But the easement is something different. It's, it's not a... a we don't know yet, because we're not far along yet. Usually the DOT today takes fee simple absolute. They don't take just an easement. So I'm not sure what they mean by the easement. Uh, they don't hardly ever take easements anymore. It's just easier for them to take the property totally. Uh, so, so we don't know yet whether or not that's going to be it. And so I think probably I put a B by yours uh, when I was looking at it. How's it going to affect? You might be able to live with it, but you might not. How much is that worth to you? That's what condemnation cases are all about. How much money are you willing to take because they damaged you that way? Are you trying to tell me on easement they actually fix it so nobody can park? In in some instances they will fix it so no one can use it. Yes, that's that's that is so. Then both you have to look at both maps to kind of get a picture of what they're going to do. It appears to me, uh, and these again are preliminary maps, that within the red lines is going to be the travel surface of the road. So if you look at the color map, you'll see red lines. And you also got to know that these maps don't always jive. These maps are not identical. These maps have one thing on one, 
and another thing on another. So we don't know exactly whether we're looking uh, <clears throat> at the final. I know we're not looking at the final map because we've got a chance to intervene. And we can change these maps if we just if we get together and do it. Um, but it sounds like the easement bill has to get clarified to exactly what that is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a question for the OT. Yeah, that's yeah, that's There's a question. Uh, yeah. Allows them to be able to work within that area. Sometimes they have what's called called a temporary construction easement. And when they do that, that means that they take it for a while while we're doing construction and then they um, and then they give it back. So you'll see on this map right here, not on these, but on this map right here, um, where it has the, the green with hatches, that, that says all easements. That means every kind of easement that they possibly could take. Construction, another one that they could do, it's not shown on here, and which will pop up later, is what's called permanent utility easement. They have, when they start this project, Duke Energy has the right to piggyback on top of their condemnation cases and put brand new uh, utility poles and transmission lines of any kind they want to. And that's not a compensation. Who, Who has the authority to destroy our town? Because this is, there's no A here for me. This is all F's for everybody. I mean, because of, this is like, I feel like that our town's being destroyed. Who has the, has the authority to destroy our town? Okay, the state of North Carolina and the town of Silver uh, and the county of Jackson, any government entity has the authority to take your property. All right? That's called eminent domain. That's what the king <laughs> has been able to do forever. The, the difference between the American system and other systems, though, is we have a constitution, and the constitution says no one will be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process. And in another place it says property will not be taken without just compensation. So the process that you go through is that they offer you what they think is just compensation. If you don't remember a thing at all tonight, remember this. They will not offer you a fair price. The DOT does not want to give you a fair price because they've got a budget. They want to meet that budget, so they will offer you less than fair price. They will call it fair price, but it's not. You can always get more. So that the way you get more is through a, a, a lawsuit, and that's called condemnation. So if a right-of-way agent comes to you and says, can I buy your property, don't sign anything. Because if you do, you're going to sell that property to the state of North Carolina. And they're going to say, thank you, and you have just been ripped off. Yes, ma'am. Yes. They will come back and make you another offer. There will be more than one offer. Never sign the first one. My father went to the DOT, had the conversation, <coughs> excuse me, with Charles Allen, and they let him know there would be more than an offer. So I'm just letting everybody know, don't feel like the first time they ever chat. It's going to be low, but that won't be the, that won't be the only one. But we're not there yet. We're, we're here. I'm sorry, you had a question? Yes, on the, the eminent domain referendum in November. Would that make any difference on any of that? Or is that anything prior to the law and that? I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry, I know. Uh, I know the laws of eminent domain give the Department of Transportation to do this, and you can't stop. The only way you could stop it was to prove that there was no useful public purpose. All eminent domain cases rest on the idea of public purpose. Well, let's do that then. <laughs> that's an uphill battle. That that's well. Uh, it's hard to say that improvement of a road is not a public purpose. But this is it's not a private purpose. This is, there's no improvement. I don't well, see any improvement. I, what are they actually accomplished? Well, the, they, as I read to you earlier, they said that the, the main things that they are trying to get across, and this was again a quote from 
Uh, Mr. Birch says the, the, the N NCDOT goals are twofold. Ease gridlock and make the road safer for motors. Uh, again, I, I don't think anybody in here has a problem with that, but we don't want to destroy the community while they're doing that. And that's why we're here tonight. Yes, okay. sir. Basically what they're going to do, they're going to build a nice new super, super highway through there, and nobody's going to have a reason to stop in town because all the businesses will be gone. Yeah. So you're just going from one place to get to the college, that's about it. Well, yeah. uh, I think yeah. that's the reason to stop in town. So is it the that's, that's, the, 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 that's the risk, okay? What I'm trying to tell the room tonight is that we can, we have a, an opportunity to change that. Right. So I, I was going to just sort of go through to, to give you an example of some real life situations that they've got on the map, literally on the map, uh, and let you uh, see what those are. But I want to turn the, the, uh, the podium over. Uh, now to uh, Julie Mayfield to come up and talk to us. Okay. I think I may just stand up here if that's all right. Okay. Um, hi everybody. Um, in case you think I'm a, um, a sort of carpetbagger from Asheville, uh, as Jay said, I'm, I'm half Sylvan, I'm half Jackson County. I don't know which half to pick. Um, but my mom was born and raised here. My, the, the names on my family tree are Bumgarner, Cable, Schuler. Um, I've got seven generations of family in the Keener Cemetery. Um, my, my mother still owns the home that my great-grandfather built over 100 years ago. I will own that home someday just outside the town boundaries. So I am, I am one of you, and this town is important to me, and it matters to me for the rest of my life. So um, I just want to lay that out here. Um, as Jay said, I am with an organization called Mountain True. Um, we are, in some ways, a relatively new organization, at least under that name. Some of you may remember the Western North Carolina Alliance that was involved in the Smart Roads um, and part of the Smart Roads Alliance years ago. Um, Jeanette uh, was our chapter leader here um, for years. Uh, and uh, so we're, so that is who we are. If you remember that organization, we have just evolved into that. We're true, we are a regional environmental advocacy group. We work on clean water, uh, public lands and forests, um, clean energy, and land use and transportation. And so that's the issue that brings me here. We have worked on transportation issues in Asheville and other parts of the region um, for, uh, so I've been in this job for 10 years, and um, the organization was working on transportation long before I got here. So we bring a lot of history to this issue. We have worked closely and adversarially with DOT. We have sued DOT and won in the past. Um, we have worked collaboratively with DOT and had some success. Uh, and so I, I just want to try to, to, it's terrible to follow Jay and everybody's now like, oh my God, this is awful. And, it, and, it, and I don't want to, it is, right? Because this is your town and these are your properties and these are your buildings. Um, I do want to offer though a little bit of hope in what I'm going to say. Because uh, as Jay says, we're not finished. This is not the final um, and so I want to just talk a little bit about the process of sort of how this project got here and, and then where, what are some of the options about going forward. So, um, so how projects like this get here is there is, um, there is a long planning process for transportation projects. And uh, projects end up, projects get proposed either by local governments or by DOT when they see a problem. And projects then work their way through this prioritization process that, that happens at the state level and with some involvement from local officials, local elected officials. Um, and then there are projects get ranked, and then they get funded based on how they get ranked. Um, my understanding is that this project was an outgrowth, actually, of the success that the Smart Roads Alliance saw when was that, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, in killing the bypass, um, the answer to that was, OK, so we need to then improve this corridor. And so that project kind of got on the list and started working its way through the process. Um, and eventually, this became the number one ranked project in the region. 
in the six western counties as, as being an area that needed attention from both a safety and congestion standpoint. And those are, those, the, the criteria that they use to rank these projects are, are pretty objective. So, you know, if, you, if, you've been, if you've paid any attention to transportation planning in North Carolina or virtually in any state for years, it used to be very political process, who had more power, DOT board members, raking money into their region. It doesn't work that way anymore. It's all very data-driven, it's very analytical, it's very objective. And so, so I think what that, what that tells me um, is that there are, objectively speaking, both safety and congestion issues in this corridor. Um, and I don't know if anybody would argue with that, but, 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 but there it is. And so what that says, to some degree, is that something needs to happen here. And because it was prioritized high and it has been funded, that's the other thing that this means, it has been funded, is that DOT, as Jay just said, DOT can move forward with this. They can. Um, they, can they, they have actually spent a fair amount of time already with the city and the county refining this design. Um, it is smaller than it was originally proposed. The, the, um, uh, is there anybody here who works for the town of Silva or any elected officials? So the, so the town has been in conversations with DOT about this project and they, they took some um, effort to shrink it down from what was originally proposed. So there have already, already been improvements made. Um, doesn't mean there can't be more. So the town is aware about whether it's 55 businesses or 12 on his F list, they're aware of that yes. in the blink of an eye, their tax base is gone. Uh, whether they are looking at it that way, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody in the town, but they are certainly aware of the impacts. Well, the town is on record of being 100% behind the project. Yeah, and, and when I had a conversation with the DOT division engineer um, for this region, he, what he said to me is, we have, we have worked closely with the town of Silva, they are okay with this design, and if, if the community wants to try to do anything different, and refine this, or shrink it, or do whatever, that the city will need, the town of Silva will need to be at the table in those conversations as well. Their job, DOT's job, I think, at least this division's engineer, this, the head of this division, views his job as to be primarily responsive to the local governments that are in his division. And so, if, they, if we want things to be changed here, we need to convince the town of Silva that what, what we think we want is better and that they should get behind that. Um, so, so, so let me come back to that just a minute. Um, one thing I just want to emphasize about what Jay said is these are not the final maps. He, he alluded to the utility um, easements that Duke Energy will have, and we don't have those maps yet. Duke has not produced those yet, um, and that could, that could change things pretty dramatically. Um, DOT is talking to Duke about trying to do underground utilities here, which would be so much better aesthetically, so much better for so many reasons, um, but Duke hasn't committed to that yet. So, um, and their PO that the state will lose their rate request, their rate increase request, so they're not going to be... No, it's a, I mean, I work, I also work a lot with Duke Energy, and I'm, it's a huge company, and I guarantee you those people aren't talking to these people. It's, they don't they don't look at it that way at all. It's, it's different. It's totally different provisions. So so all that to say is that the maps are not final. And just to reemphasize Jay's point, there is still time. In my conversation with Brian Burks, the division engineer, I asked him if he would be open to a community process of looking at this and having some input on the design and looking for opportunities to make changes. And his answer was absolutely. As long as the town of Silva is in the in the room and as part of that discussion, um, but they uh, they are they are very open to that, and um, I have been part of processes with DOT where we have had tremendous success at this stage in the process of refining design, um, and that's both in the city of Asheville, um, it's been up in Boone, it's uh, and and this this particular DOT division, this division runs over in Henderson County. They, um, they proposed, they had a public meeting like y'all had a little while ago, put up maps like this in two different communities there who went absolutely berserk. And um, they have been in a process of refining those designs in consultation with those, with members of that community, those communities and the local governments 
ever since then. So this is a real thing that we can, the, the door is not closed. We can actually try to impact this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit in a minute about, about what, the, what the options are. Um, it, so another option as opposed to just you know trying to work with DOT to refine this design, another option would be just to kill it. <coughs> like how do you kill it? How do you just stop it? And I'll just tell you it's at this point in the process, super hard to do. It's been prioritized, it's the number one project in the region, it's been funded, um, and it there is there's not there's not really a good legal hook to kill it, which um, I didn't say this earlier, but I'm, also, I'm, I'm a lawyer, and I always look for the legal hooks to kill a project. And there probably isn't really one here. Um, I don't even have property in any of these areas, and so if I did, I mean, I, I, I would probably not be in this so right. This right. is just where I function. I, I will offer another example from Henderson County. Recently, they, again, they, they, it's a project called the Balfour Parkway. It was a brand new road that was going to cut across a big swath of Henderson County, big controlled access, four lane divided highway, and they put out the drawings just like this, and the community went nuts. Absolutely went nuts. They organized themselves, they lobbied their county commission, they had 300 people show up at the county commission meeting, the last six hours, and um, the county commission eventually voted to withdraw that project from the, from the, the, the planning process and, and from the state list of transportation projects. And that happened. So it can happen. I guess that's kind of what you guys did on 107, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> it's not impossible. Um, it, uh, it's Somebody not may want it somewhere. And, and the town, there might be a town that wants something like this. Yeah, but that's true. Um, it, the, the money's not, it's not like, okay, we don't want it here, so send it over to Franklin. You know, it doesn't, doesn't quite work that way. Um, so, you know, my, um, I guess my, my approach to these things is, is always to try to improve something um, before you just sort of outright kill it. And, and sometimes that's not possible, and sometimes that's not what people want. And that's really for you guys to decide, as a community, what you want to try to do. Um, I, I would venture to say that there's no harm in trying to have a discussion about how to make it better. Um, before you try to kill it, if that's where you end up, if you can't get the kind of improvements that you want, you can still always try to kill it. How am I going to do business with downtown Silver on the RMA? It's not this yeah. big mess. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that this is not How am I going to get to the library? Yeah. How am I going to get to the library during this time? Yeah, I, I, there are, so my experience with DOT is that sometimes they don't come up with the most creative <coughs> solutions. And there are, uh, as Jay said, the, the people who have designed this project do not live here. Um, they live in Raleigh or Fayetteville or somewhere else. Um, they're not investing here. They're not looking for ways to necessarily, um, you know, save, um, you know, Mr. Smith's building here or this building over here. They're not. It's just not right. It's just not their. their that's not their approach. That's not. But that's where that's where the community can make a big difference. Um, yeah. Are there ways? I mean, are there other community ways for us to kind of get in touch with other communities that have projects go through like this, and so they can be like, you know, we're all worried at first, and then we got involved, yeah. we made some changes, and yeah. we love it, and it actually opened up new opportunities for other businesses, and made our town a lot more walkable or yes. you know, recyclable or whatever. Yes. Yeah, there so are those, are there, there are there access to those? There are projects? absolutely there are absolutely those projects that have happened um, where there have been you know redos of downtown Main Street and they've become more walkable, they've become they've become better places, safer places. Yeah, absolutely, those are those are there. I know some of them. Sarah will know some of them. So yeah, that's that, that's um, Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Maybe I should address this to Jay, but is, is the focus of this group more to make an effort to minimize the effect and to work with the state to minimize the effect of this project on the individual property owners or to stop it? I think the, the former, not the latter. I mean, <clears throat> this thing has, has gone so far in the planning process that I, I agree with Julie. I'm not sure that it can be 
change uh, in terms of whether they do it or they don't do it. Um, so, in my view, the thing to do is try to affect the kind of change is has the least amount of damage to the to the business owners and the property owners, so that we can we can uh, address the issues of safety and congestion, but not kill our our business community. So that's that's what I'm shooting for is that right there. Yes. Um. Anything can survive. 
lot of what they're talking about here. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what I said. You, you're going to have a bike lane and a pedestrian lane for people to do. What? So, oh, I remember this. this. I remember when that was there. Was a ball is still so, so this does happen across the country where five, a big five lane sort of almost expressway like roads like this get turned into beautiful places and actually become better for the businesses. I know it is, I know it is so hard to imagine. Thank 
questions that we all face. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be bringing people in from outside the community that need a better understanding of what, what this road looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, what are the issues that are trying to be resolved, and how can we try to protect the infrastructure of, of your community, not just the road itself. Uh, some of the things that we might be able to do is we can, we can also help in putting a dollar figure on the properties that are being affected and be able to translate what that means to a bottom line impact for, uh, for taxes in the community and what that can be constrained uh, for any you know, other um, options that the, that the town is considering. So we can do some of the number crunching to be able to, to show just what the financial impact would be and where would be the least financial, uh, the least financial impact. Um, but ultimately, you know, the idea is to try to find a way to solve the problem uh, and if we get to the point that we can't find a solution that works for a community, well then you know, we, we examine what are the legal options out there to try and stop. The other thing that, that we can try to do is, you know, Jay mentioned Walter Kulash. So Walter is a transportation planner engineer. Um, he's mostly retired. He lives up in Spruce Pine. Um, he worked with the Smart Roads Alliance a number of years ago. And he, he approaches transportation planning differently than a traditional engineer going to look for those creative solutions that support community desires rather than just, as Chris said, looking at it from the bird's eye view on the map. Um, we also have access to other national experts um, who spend their entire time doing exactly this, working with communities to try to find community-based and community-driven solutions on, on really thorny transportation corridors like this. Um, we know those folks. We can bring them to town. It may cost a little money, but you know, frequently bringing in these, these national experts that have worked all around the country and have seen, have seen, have worked with. There are many other DOTs that across the country that 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 don't do it the way our DOT does. <laughs> um, there are DOTs that do it better, uh, and uh, and you know, we, we can bring those kind of folks to town to have community community design conversations. Uh, and that sort of thing. So we really, we, we want to, if, if you guys are, if, if it's where you are, if, and wanting to try to work to improve this, um, either while you're trying to decide whether to kill it, or in place of trying to kill it, um, we are happy to help facilitate that. We, we, would, we would welcome the opportunity to be helpful that way. You're talking about the total medical track, correct? I'm coming from a bigger big city. I'm coming from Florida, and I know what you're talking about. The traffic here is two minutes, and that's it. It's a joke. For you guys to kill our businesses, I think that you don't care about us. And now, I mean, I'm we're not DOT. <laughs> we're on your side. We're not from here. Where she gets, but we're not. But we care about this stuff. We've been here for about seven years now. And I think what they're trying to do is kill us as a community. They don't care. And it's, it's just so, it gets me really mad, the fact that they're not looking at us. They're looking at the money and what they can get. But by doing this, the cars are just going to go right through Western, and that's it. They're not going to stop for whatever we need. They're just not thinking about the community outside. There won't be any way to stop because everything will be closed off and grown. Well, it's our job to build roads. It's our job to build the And that's kind of what they're here trying to offer. It's like, you know, DOT, it's not their job to build their town. It's our job to build our town. And they're here to try to give us an avenue, a vehicle, okay. So this is this is a proposal. What's the next step? Well, they're saying there are next steps. We don't have to accept this. We can come together, we can think about it, we can discuss it, and we can come up with our options and be like. The only thing I think is a mess is that they don't fix the potholes, they don't fix the rough edges, you know. That's the only thing that I think is a mess. I agree with her. She's from Florida, and I've been around. This is the safest road. I mean, I've been in town Friday school time, the busiest time. I think to myself, wow, I can't believe I'm getting through it. This quick a time when I lived in such and such a year, I would never, ever live anywhere where the road was this great except for the park. And they don't fix the park. Did I understand that they were going to start? Well, so that so Ryan Burst told me that is the current plan, but again, that is 
I've got to go, Jay. I'm on, I'm on board with okay. working with them, but not stopping it. Okay. Thanks. said that they want to move an intersection or they want to change the street. And, and I think we can address those and, and take the 22 Fs that I've counted down to 11, or maybe five, or maybe none. That's my goal is to preserve the business community of this town itself, not to uh, kill it. And that's what we can do if we're going to come together and be the Smart Roads Alliance again. We've done it before. And we can do it again. So if you want to be part of this process and preserve your community and redesign it in such a way that we can build a good, smart road, then 
now it's time to join up. So, if everybody in here is willing to, to coalesce into a group that uh, will serve that purpose, then great. Uh, I want you to, to sign up. You've signed up at the door, and we'll follow up with you. But we need a couple more things in terms of your commitment tonight. And first of all, let me say that Asheville decided to mount through do this for free. They get their funding from other sources. They're dedicated to the environment and community of West North Carolina. And we're not going to have to shell out a whole lot of money to get them involved with us. And <clears throat> Walter Kulosh is a little bit different because he does it for a fee. Uh, we've already promised Auburn Friedman that we'd make a donation to the coalition, Canary Coalition, because otherwise he's taking his time. And Auburn was a member of this as well as, as uh, Jeanette and, and uh, Sarah. Who, no, you were a member of Smart Roads. But anyhow, Smart Roads allows work once and will work again. Uh, so we need a little money. Uh, and we have a, a lawyer in town, Gary Miller, who said that he will be the treasurer. The money would be used to pay for things like uh, Walter Coolidge, who's a planning and engineer guy, who, who has already told me that he will come working with Mountain uh, Troop and do a, a uh, proposal and do it for free. He will do a complete study and make a recommendation of what he can do and give us a cost not to exceed a certain limit. And he's done marvelous work for I've seen him work magic on that uh, stupid Southern Loop. And so uh, you don't, we don't have Southern Loop mainly because of Walter Kublosh and the Mountain Lines uh, and the Smart Road Lines uh, resisted the DOT. So if you're willing to contribute something to it, Raise your hand if you went to church on Sunday. <laughs> Come on, who went to church? Jeff got to church. Who else? You know how this is done. We have to raise some money. Each one of us, I need three more ushers. We have more church goers than just Jeff.
And we hope that we might have some preliminary design proposals at that time from uh, not only Mount True, but on the Kulos about uh, how we're going, where we're going, and, and uh, so you'll be fully informed. We're not going to keep you in the dark. Uh, we're going to try to make sure you know exactly what's going on, when it happens, and uh, we'll be, hopefully, when you put your name down, let the email address, if you didn't do that, on your way out, we'll put that down, because that's how we're going to probably do our, our most of our communication, is through email. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll let you know when the next meeting is. It won't be long, it'll probably be a month. Uh, we've got some work we've got to do to, to work with the town, to work with the DOT, to get their buy-in. This is a bona fide group that is dedicated to what we've uh, committed ourselves to tonight. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. email them as PDFs. They're, they're not actually, the DOT changed their website a number of years ago. It used to be that you could go on and pull up any project and look at the maps and they, they only have the major projects on their website now. So getting in, getting all the to email them to you is going to be the best way. I thought we are number one on their list. Well, <laughs> just, the, the, they look at it from a statewide perspective. The February 2017 maps, which were mapping at SSG, those are available on our firm's website, silverlawyer.com slash taking, and it's just all the maps, and there's some additional information about the process, what you need to go through. Um, there are different versions of that, and so um, you're looking at the, I think it's street, uh, Super Street A, there are, there are different alternate plans. And Super Street Alternate 2A, I think, is the one that has the most traction. You'll, what you get, you'll have to, to produce on your own printer, and that's how big it'll be. This, this cost $190 to print all this out. So uh, you can get one printed out of the print shop if you want a big one. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get a 8 or 14. It, it's actually really easier to look at it on a computer because you can really zoom in yeah. and look at these, and look at your property, and you can look at it all much, much easier on the computer than, than you can on. Okay, thank you all for coming. We're going to uh, adjourn now, and we'll get in touch with you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I did want to add, Smart Road Alliance has a Facebook page. There's not very many people on it. I'm going to try to update meetings and things like that. If you guys go click on like, you'll get the notifications. <laughs>